Thank you, Jesus. We're going to sing a Christmas song. Hallelujah. I feel like praising him in Christmas music. If you want to open your hymnals, but you don't have to, they'll be up on the screen. It's page 388. Oh, come all ye faithful.
Fitting with the next song is at Calvary. Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise God. Amen. At Calvary. Lord, I give you glory and honor and praise. Page 139. <laughs>
Glory to His name. Josh with us tonight. Yes. Yes. He took him another sabbatical in the hospital this past week. But God is good to him. I want you to pray with me that God will completely just heal his body. Yes. How, how many of you know that God can do that? Yes. It, it doesn't matter what the doctors may say that you have. There is a God that sent his son Jesus Christ and it's by his stripes that we're healed. And I, I just believe in the divine healing power of a divine God. It's time for us to worship the Lord tonight. And we're going to worship him through giving. God has given to us all day long. Yes. I thank God that I was able to get up this morning and stand up on my own two feet. Amen. How about you? Amen. I thank God that I was able to have food on my table today. God provided in advance. I didn't have to worry about where it was coming from. We have plenty of food. And I am so thankful for the clothes on my back, the shoes on my feet. God has provided and all I can do is just give him a thank you offer. Just praise him tonight. And just bless his holy name for all of his goodness that he's shown unto us. Our ushers are coming at this time to 
lead you in worship through giving. And let's just give as given unto the Lord. God has just been so good to us. I, I'm telling you, He blesses us day after day, moment after moment. And we are just a blessed people. And I am so thankful for the blessings of the Lord. Brother Simmons, will you pray God's blessings on the offering for us? Father God, we love you. We thank you for this day that you've given us to worship you. And God, I ask your blessings upon this congregation each and every heart. God, I know if there's a need there tonight, God, that you can touch them, God, each one. And Lord, I ask you for Josh, God, that you'd lay your divine hands upon this. And God, completely healing, God, for the glory of God. Jesus, we come in your name. Jesus, we love you. We appreciate you. We thank you what you did for us on Calvary, God. God, I so thank you for salvation. Now, Lord, I ask you for this. <clears throat> Lord, I ask you for this offering. God, you said for your glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. service but the weather was not cooperating and uh, with the wind blowing like it was I just felt like it would be better if we just come back on the inside whether it is or not they said that by 6 o'clock the weather was supposed to be down in the 60's out there tonight and I started thinking Lord it was only 70 in the church this morning people said they were freezing to death so what are they going to do out there in the 60's so, but I'm uh, so thankful that you're here with us tonight let me remind everyone that is in the Christmas play that you have practice Tuesday night, Thursday night, and Saturday night. 6.45 on Tuesday and Thursday. What time Saturday? 5 o'clock Saturday. So uh, come on out. Let's get ready. That is next Sunday night. Man, can you believe how close that we're getting to Christmas already? And asking if you can to help us out by bringing in Christmas candy to be put into the uh, Christmas treat bags. Uh, we have Sister Ann and them. They're, they're going to be helping us out with... Uh, trying to get the fruit, the uh, apples and the oranges and things like that, and just ask you to invite people to be with us next uh, Sunday evening for our Christmas play. I really believe that they're going to be touched. Tomorrow evening is our You're Not Alone meeting, and I want to encourage everyone that would like to come to come. It, it's a time where that we have just been able to talk, and, and uh, really and truly, if you have someone that you know that is on drugs or they're having anger issues and you're having to deal with those things and sometimes you feel like that you're just alone and you don't know what to do. What we found out, we're not alone. Right. There are so many people that are dealing with this. I just made a brief mention this morning of the 15-year-old girl that had hung herself by in the care of uh, supposed to be professional help and all of this stuff. But it also said in there of how that she talked to her dad and her dad was trying to tell her what that she needed to do. She's gone. I hate that. Yes. There's a dad. There's a mom. There's a family tonight 
that's hurting. And uh, I want us to be there for people that are hurting. Yes. Amen. You say, Brother Spratlin, that can get depressing. Well, we need somebody to lean on. Every one of us has walked through a time in our life whenever that we needed somebody to lean on. Why not the church? Why not have a family right here? And so I want to encourage you, if you know anyone, this is not just for our congregation. Lord, I don't care where they have to drive from. But if we can help them, that's exactly what I want to do. I want to be able to, to help these people along the way. And uh, just briefly let me say that starting January, we're going to be going on another 21-day fast. So start prepping, planning, preparing. That that does not mean uh, start drinking all the extra sodas and things like that because that's going to hurt you whenever that you don't drink soda. And uh, so I'm just telling you, start prepping right now. Let's get planned. Let's get our hearts and minds set up on the right goal. And we're going to give these days unto the Lord. Continue to worship the Lord with Sister more than these ladies. <laughs> just had this old song on my mind. I've been singing it today. It said, Cain and Lan is just in sight. Worship with us. Well, Moses let God's children for you.
Hallelujah. How many of you know Canaan land is just his side? We're getting closer and closer to glory all the time, aren't we? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I'm asking you tonight to go with me to the book of St. John, chapter 12. St. John, chapter 12. Have you ever thought about the reason why Jesus came? Sure we have. And sometimes it's kind of like the multiple reasons. You know, sometimes we, we get focused upon one thing. And some would say he came to die on the cross. But Jesus came that we could live. Jesus came so that all of us could live. Will you stand with me for the reading of God's word? I want to speak to you tonight for the next few moments on this thought. For this cause. For this cause. I am so glad that Jesus came. I am. I'm so glad yes. that Jesus came. How about you? You glad that Jesus came? Yes. Hallelujah. John chapter 12 and verse 23. And then we're going to go to John chapter 18 and verse 37. But in verse 23, he said, And Jesus answered them, saying, The hour is come that the Son of Man must be glorified. Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. He that loveth his life shall lose it. He that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Now is my soul troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this cause came I unto this hour. Jesus said, this is what my life's been about. This is where I know that I had to go. Then go to St. John, the 18th chapter, and verse 37. This is the time where that Jesus has now been taken. He is being treated like an a outlaw, criminal, whatever you want to call him. He is standing before Pilate, and Pilate looks at him and said, are you a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king, to this end was I born. And for this cause came I into this world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Notice once again what Jesus is trying to tell us. He said, this is the reason I came. The, the reason he came was not to heal blind Bartimaeus. That, that's a good thing. It was not to raise Lazarus from the dead. Though all of these things just prove to us that he was who he said he was. But Jesus said, this is my purpose. This is my reason for being here. And I want God to help us tonight. Will you pray with us that God would just touch our hearts and refresh us upon the cross. Father, I'm asking you tonight to speak to us. Lord, all I want to be is just a vessel yielded to you, God, that you could speak through tonight, Lord, to remind us of the reason why that you came. I know, Lord, this is Christmas time. But, oh, Lord, Christmas was a time that you came into this world and we can celebrate your birth. But even then, Lord, even then, it, it was appointed that you would one day go to the cross and die for us that we could live. And I just ask you to God that you would touch every one of our hearts tonight and also realize that, God, that we have an appointment. We have a reason why that we're here. God, help us to fulfill the destiny in you. And Lord, we'll fail not to give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. <coughs> Can I tell you that the reason that you're here is not to be on the job that you're on? Stop to think about what, what I'm trying to tell you. The reason why Brother Ed was born was not to spend so many years at Publix. Wearing out his knees and his joints. That's not the reason why God sent him to this earth. The reason why Brother Henry is here is not to work on this for the state and make sure all the signs are set properly in order. Somebody's going to be tearing up a sign. You'll, you'll have work tomorrow. Somebody's going to be out there to demonstrate their power, their ability to destroy something. That's not the reason why that we came and was born. We came into this world 
to be a, a child of God, to bring glory and honor unto God. And so many times we are distracted. We are sidetracked. Jesus stayed focused. And they even have a song out that talks about uh, the life of Christ in between the age of 12 and 30. What were those years like? Well, we don't have anything to tell us. Some would tell us that in those years that he studied and he literally could have been a priest, even though that we know that he was the high priest. But he was referred to even as rabbi or as a teacher. Uh, he, he was the son of God. I don't know what Jesus did with those 18 years, but he knew that his life was to bring honor and glory unto the Father. Not only did he come to bring honor and glory unto the Father, but he came to bring life everlasting to mankind. I think it's so amazing how that Jesus stayed focused and everything that he did was with intent and was with purpose. This is something that God has just resurrected in my spirit, birthed within me even greater and stronger that our life should be a life that is intentionally lived for God. And yet we're so distracted with everything else and we're wondering why the kingdom is neglected. My mind goes back into the Old Testament whenever that uh, it came time to rebuild the walls and to rebuild the temple. And you read about how that Nehemiah and Obadiah and Zerubbabel and these men would go back and they would find things had been neglected and their hearts were broken. And they were saying, where's the priest? And they said, well, the priest had to go back into the field and go to work because the people stopped coming to the house of God. They stopped tithing, they stopped giving. And these men of God, their hearts were broken. Why? People had lost focus. They lost focus. And I, I've even shared with you in the past of how that, they're telling us that churches are in steep decline and how that right now in America, there's between one and 200 churches every week that are closing their doors. And I can start trying to think of reasons why. And I believe it's because that we have lost our purpose. We have lost the focus of why that God sent us to be a church in 2018, it, it's not about us. It's still all about Jesus. Amen. It's still all about doing the will of the Father. Jesus showed us there was a reason he came and he stayed focused upon that. And I want to talk to you tonight about for this cause. Look at the word cause with me. The word cause means a reason for an action or condition. This is the reason I came. There is a motive. It talks about cause and motive, something that brings about an effect or a result, according to Webster. So I want you to understand that Jesus came with a reason, and with that reason, it required action. And that action had to have a motive behind it. And because of that motive, it would bring effect. It would bring results. I think so many times because we have got used to just doing things just off the top of our head until that we have lost the reason and we have lost the cause and we have lost the motive of why that we should be here. And that motive should be something that brings about effects or results. But if we're not focused upon it, then we are not going to be working in order to see the results that God wants to do. I am aware of the scripture, Paul planted a polished water, but God gave the increase. And a lot of us want to skip over Paul and Apollos and go to the increase. But the increase did not come without the planting and the watering. And, and too many churches today are expecting an increase without the planting and without the watering. Now, I, I love to have a garden. My wife and I talk about this often. And I told her, I said, I've even thought about building me a raised garden. You know, something that you can put dirt in and, and build it up and put it out in the sun and plant you some plants in it. 
But in that comes work. In any type of gardening, there is work involved. And Jesus' life was filled with work. You know, it, it didn't say that he went up to the temple and, and just sit there and said, all right, come here, boys, and I'm going to tell you this and I'm going to tell you that. No, his life was filled with action and his life was filled with direction. And I love it whenever Jesus said that I have come to do the will of the Father. And then he turns around and says, whatever I see the Father do, that's what I do. But he is a doer. He is active. He is motivated uh, to do the will of the Father. It would seem like that the whole life of Jesus was all about bringing glory to God. And he had to stay, he had to stay on track with that. Uh, let me tell you, he was tempted in like manner as we are. The Bible said, yet without sin. And the devil tried to distract him. Take him up there and show him all the world and said, I'll give you all of this world if you'll just come. After all, Jesus, you know that you have the charisma, you have the power, and people are going to flock to you. Why don't you just come on and follow me? I'll give you fortune. I'll give you fame. You can't tell me that he wasn't tempted, but yet he resisted that temptation because he was staying focused upon the cause that he came to this earth. He stayed focused upon that. God help me to stay focused upon the reason I'm here. The calling of God upon my life. Why are you here? Preacher, I'm here to fill up you. I differ with you. You have a calling of God upon your life. If you do not know what that might be, then you need to pray. Ask God to open up your spiritual eyes because I promise you, God never called you to get comfortable sitting on a church pew. He called us all to be laborers and workers together. But Jesus gives us illustrations that is absolutely alarming and it is contrary even unto the desires of the flesh. He said, except that seed dies, it cannot produce any fruit. And so Jesus is trying to tell those people, except you're willing to crucify your flesh and to let your will die, then the fruits that God wants to be so plentiful in your life, it's not going to be there. You have to be willing to let God be in control. You have to be focused upon the cause, the reason why you're here. If you get distracted, then you start allowing that carnal man or that selfish will to be resurrected. Then that is contrary unto the will of God. So guess what we have to do? We have to crucify the flesh, as Paul would put it, and we do that on a daily basis. So that's the reason why I encourage you every day to pray. If you don't pray, the devil's going to slip into your backyard and he's going to plant a lot of tares where that you're trying to plant a beautiful garden. And you've got to stay focused and keep praying. But Jesus, he was also trying to tell us, he said, you've got to die before that you can live. And a lot of us want the living part, but we don't like the dying part. And when I look back here upon the focus of Christ, I realize that, that Jesus, he had that focus in, and, and everything, he, everything he did was actually leading him to the cross and he was telling people he was going to the cross, but yet they didn't want to hear that. They did not want to believe that. Now, Lord, why would you go to the cross? You just healed blind Bartimaeus. Lord, why would you go to the cross? You just healed Jairus' daughter. Why would you go to the cross? You just saved a wicked man like Zacchaeus and now he's going back around making restitution. Lord, why would you go to the cross? You just raised Lazarus from the dead. Lord, why would you go to the cross? Look at all the good that you have done. Why, Lord, look, you fed the multitude of 5,000. And look what else you've done, Lord. Look how that, how that, how that, Lord, you've been teaching the people and people have come to you and the possessed are now set free. Why would you be going to the cross? And the Lord's trying to tell them, but yet this is a reason why that I came. It, it was the purpose. This is the cause. I have to go to the cross. So why does a good man have to go there? Because he goes there to fulfill the will of God. If you're not careful, even the apostle Paul had to address this. He said, I was given that thorn in the flesh. He said that I may not be exalted above measure. You have to understand the cross keeps you humble. The will of God keeps you humble. And God does not want us to be exalted in ourselves, but everything about us 
must be about exalting and lifting up on high the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what Jesus is trying to tell us. Whenever you look at him on that old rugged cross, everything was significant. He was the king of kings, uh, and he should have had a royal diadem. He should have had a million-dollar crown of gold sitting on his head, but instead he had the crown of thorns. Uh, and look at him. He should have been clothed in, in royalty, but no, no, no. He, he's dying in, in a way that, that men look to be shameful. He's been stripped uh, of those priestly garments uh, that he was once wearing. And Jesus is trying to tell us, look, it's going to be worth it all. I love it whenever Jesus looks upon those people out there and he's looking upon the soldiers and he's looking upon the Jews that have brought about all the false accusations and those men that have nailed him to the cross and those that are cursing him. And he's saying, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And he said, Preacher, I don't understand that. Could it be that he was saying, Father, forgive them because they don't understand that what they're doing right here is the will of the Father. Because it's for this cause that I came. I had to come into this world to die. We see that what sin cost the Holy Savior. We see what sin cost him because he had no sin, but it was your sin and it was my sin. Jesus is trying to tell us also in this life, you may have to bear the reproach of other people, but that's all right. You keep your integrity with God. You keep living holy. You keep living righteous. You keep living like God wants you to live. He said it's going to be all right because your reward is not here. Our reward waits for us on the other side. And all this would have been in vain if Jesus Christ had not risen from the dead. All right? Follow along with me because I, I, I'm trying to take you to this place where that the reason why Christ really came into this world, which is multiple, but also to, to understand the main thrust, the main reason. Yes, it was to die up on that old rugged cross, but it was just as important for him to be resurrected from the dead. How many men have died on the cross? Never come back. Never come back. But Jesus had already made a very profound statement. He said, I'll lay down my life. He said, but the Father's given unto me the, the power to take life back. And here he is now. He's going to be a witness about his death, but he's also going to be a previous witness to his resurrection. And he's trying to tell those disciples, he said, boys, don't get all bent out of shape. I know this is hard for you to see. It's hard for you to understand what's happening to me. He said, but that's all right. He said, in three days, I'm going to live again. I believe there's a great lesson right here because sometimes we walk through the valley. And while walking through that valley, it's hard for us to see three days later. We're so wrapped up in the now. But Lord, right now is where I'm at. Right now I'm hurting. Right now, Lord, death is all around me. Right now I'm broken. Right now I am grieving. But the Lord says, I want you to look into the future. I want you to see what awaits you. You may have your troubles and trials now, but I have shown you through my life. You be faithful in the midst of your troubles and trials. There is coming a day of resurrection. And, and I don't want to go back and re-preach this morning's sermon. But whenever you look back at Job, the very same thing happened to him. My Lord, he went through it. You can say that he went through hell on earth. But because that he maintained his integrity with God, there came a day whenever God said, Job, you pray for your friends. Uh, and I'm going to give back unto you everything that you've lost. Uh, and then more. And, and people started giving unto him the coins. Uh, and then God began to multiply everything that he had again. But Job had to walk through the valley. And could it have been said about Job? This is your cause. This is your reason. You came not just to be a wealthy man. You came to show this world that you can go to the very point, to the brink of, of being busted and lose everything that you have, but maintain your integrity with God and God's going to pick you up and God's going to show you His power, His glory, His strength. I don't 
know how God does it, but you know what it does, Brother Ed? It encourages me when I don't feel like going on to get up and go on. When it feels like my back is against the wall, I just have to look up and say, that's all right, God, because you are the way maker. I don't know which way to go, but I'm trusting in you. And when it looks like that my days are so full of darkness and there's not a ray of hope, hallelujah, I can look at him and say, Father, I'm not walking by sight. I'm walking by faith. I'm holding on to the precious word of an almighty God. And there is a reason why I'm walking in this darkness. But there's also a reason why I'm going to see a glorious light shining at the end of this tunnel. And I know everything's going to be all right. Everything's going to be all right. I love it to go back. And let's look once again at the life of Christ. Because you can see where the, the troubles and the trials and can come and literally just scare you. But Jesus said in John 10 and 10, the thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. How could Christ give us life? Because whenever he was tempted, he resisted all the temptation. Follow along with me now. You remember whenever there, the man that had the palsy and they tear the roof off, they put him down in front of him and Jesus does not look at him at first and say, rise, take up your bed and walk. The first thing he said was, your sins are forgiven you. You remember that? And then all the started going on. You know what I'm talking about? All the whispering. Who's this man think he is? He don't have no power to forgive. Only God has the power to do that. Can you just hear all the murmuring? And Jesus said, but that you may know that the Son of Man had power to forgive sins. I say unto you, rise, take up your bed and walk. And the man leaped up. Why did Jesus do that? Well, we know that he was the Son of God. But if he had fallen in the temptations Coming out of that fast, he never had the power to forgive sin. But he's the son of God. And he's shown us how to be the sons of God. You resist temptation. He did not say you're not going to have temptation. But he said we have to resist temptation. Resist the devil. And he will flee. That's what the Bible says, isn't it? You've got to resist the devil and then he will flee. But Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. I like what he said in John 16 and 33. He said, these things have I spoken unto you that in me you might have peace. This is the reason why I came. Lord, they hate you and yet you're saying to me that you're gonna have peace. I don't understand it. Isn't it amazing that whenever they were doing all the railing upon him, you didn't see Jesus spazzing out. You didn't see him freaking out. No, you didn't. There was times he just walked on out of the crowd whenever that they were ready to stone him. Why? There was a peace that God put on the inside of him. Have you ever walked into a valley and you did not know how you were going to come out of that valley, but the peace of God that passes all understanding just came upon you and you said, I'm not stressing over this thing. I am a child of the Most High God and I am in God's hands and God is going before me and I'm not going to fear I'm not going to worry I'm just going to trust God how can that be because Jesus said it's for this cause I came into this world that you may know peace that you may have peace in this world you're going to have tribulation but be a good cheer I have overcome the world now greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world how am I an overcomer because he is an overcomer and now the overcomer now lives within me and because he is overcome now I can overcome are you getting the picture with me Jesus is saying this is a reason why I came yes I came to die on that old rugged cross but I also came so that way you may be strong in your weakness whenever whenever your own abilities are not sufficient and your own power is actually powerless to the cause and whenever whenever your mind is in such confusion
confusion and you don't know what to do. Jesus said, realize this. You are my child. You are my chosen. And I live within you. And I'm going to give you the peace of mind. Though the devil's trying to take your sanity away from you. He's not going to be able to do it. Because I am the Prince of Peace. And I've come to give you peace. Friend, I'm telling you tonight. Some of us need to grab a hold of the reason why Jesus came. And say and declare, God, I'm going to live for you. You are my reason for living. I am going to serve you. I'm going to walk with you. I'm going to be what God wants me to be because I realize that if Jesus had to go to the cross, but look at the power that came from the cross because the power was not death, but yet it was death unto eternal life. If we can grasp a hold of this, some of us feel like, Lord, I'm giving up so much. But what God wants to give unto us is nothing compared to what we're dying out to. But I don't want to give it up. Well, Jesus said, look, I'll give it all up. Yes. <laughs> Where's he at tonight? He's sitting at the right hand of the Father making intercession for you and I. Yeah, I can understand him wanting to give it up, Brother Ed. I can. This world, we may not like to think about it, but we're just passing through. Yeah, that's right. But we don't know when our time is. Right. You know, we, we like to think, all right, Lord, I'm going to live to be 120 years old. But that may not be the will of God. That's right. This may be our last day. Amen? Oh, now, preacher, be careful. You've already got to get negative here. No, this, this is facts. This is reality. But the thing is, if I have Jesus living on the inside, then one of these glorious days, I'm going to be living with him in glory. Amen. And that is the cause. Yeah. That's the reason Jesus came. Yeah. He came to live, to die, and live again so I may be able to live with him forever. Yeah. I must never forget the cross. It is an example unto me. It shows me the motive. It shows me the reasoning for it all. I want God to help me. I want to live for Jesus. I want to do the will of the Father like Jesus did the will of the Father. How about you? I want to say, even like Jesus, it's for this cause that I am alive. I'm not an accident. No, there was not an angel that came down to my mother and said, Hilda, you're going to conceive a son in your womb and you're going to call his name John? No, there was not an angel that came down to my dad and said all these things, but I want to tell you just as much as John the Baptist was chosen, John Spratlin's been chosen. And just as much as Samuel, you remember Samuel? That little Hannah's crying out unto God and saying, God, I just want me a baby. And Eli the priest looks at her and looks at her like that. You know, she's a woman of a lie. She's drunk. She's in here just moving her lips. And she said, no, 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 I'm not drunk. She said, my heart's just tore apart on the inside of me. And he, he don't even know what it is. But he said, woman, well, he said, God's going to answer your prayers. And then what happened? She could see within her womb. And she takes that little child and she gives him back unto God. And Samuel becomes a great prophet in Israel actually to bring one of the greatest transitions that ever took place in Israel's history about bringing them back to God, even bringing a, a king up on the stage and, and, and putting him up on the throne. No, it wasn't nothing like that. But I understand this, that I am just as much chosen and I am just as important as Samuel. I am just as important as John the Baptist. So are you. So are you. Women, you're just as important as Elizabeth. Well, I don't feel it. You are. You're not here by happenstance. You're not here by an accident. You're not here by coincidence. I'm telling you, you are here for a cause. God wants to use you. God wants to guide you. God wants to mold your life. How is that going to take place, Brother Spratlin? You're going to learn to seek God. You're going to learn to seek the Lord. I had, I had a young man text me the other day, and he was saying, Pastor, what should I do? And, and he was telling me about the dilemma that he's in. I said, pray. 
not the answer he was wanting to hear. He wanted me to give him a fix. I, I'm just being honest with you. He wanted me to text him back and give him a three-point outline on what he could do to solve all of his crisis and all of his problems. And when I text him and said, pray, I caught him off guard. But I want to tell you this much. If we would learn the power of prayer, God has worked in this young man's life and God has made ways possible for him since then. But it's been God. And what God wants you and I to do is learn to pray. Well, I do pray. Really. It's like one young girl, she told me, she said, I read my Bible every day. I said, you do? Yes, I read one verse. <laughs> well, it's going to take you a lifetime to get all the way through the Bible, honey. Right? But honestly, that's what she told me. She said, I read one verse. I don't know if she thought she was doing God a favor or what. But you understand, there's a reason why you're here. And Jesus gave us an example. To find the reason we're here, you have to spend time with the Father. And the Father starts revealing himself not only unto you, but in you. And this, once again, is a life of progression where you grow in the Lord. He takes you down the road of life and teaches you to trust in him. But has his life came with a cause? Has his life came for a reason? And in that reason came motive you're going to find a reason that's going to bring motive to you and that motivation is going to cause you to start doing what God has called you to do. But it's going to start with prayer. I, I honestly just feel like I need to close right here. I have not even gotten to my second page on my outline. You're probably thinking if it took you that long to preach the first page, please stop. But I'm going to tell you that God wants to use everybody here. I'm not one of these preachers that just want to talk in general. I believe with all of my heart, God wants to use everybody in this church. I do. How is God going to use me? I don't know. He's not shown me that. He's not revealed that to me. I want to go a step further. I believe that God wants to use you greater than what he is using you already. I do. I just believe that God wants to use you. Me? Me? You. And if God can start using us as individuals, then we can say God is using the church. Because it's not the walls that make up the church, it's the people that are within the walls. God's not looking for the walls to be obedient, He's looking for you and I to be obedient. And then if we will become obedient, then God will fill the inside of the walls with His presence, with His glory, and with people. Will you stand with me tonight? I challenge you this, this morning and, and challenging you, I, I, want us to, I want us to pursue God. It's scary to think that 2018 is coming to an end so quick. 2019 is no longer just months away, it's actually just days away. What we've done this year, we cannot go back and redo, though sometimes we'd like to. But what we do in 2019 can be done with a greater anointing, with a greater influence, with a greater cause, a greater motive. And maybe I need to stop right here and ask you right now, do you have a motive? Why are you doing what you're doing for God? What, what is your motivation? Is it to build the kingdom of God? Is it to bring glory to God? Or is it for some type of self-exaltation where that people look to you and say, oh yeah, that's a special person right there. God's looking for some people tonight that will just humble themselves at the foot of the cross and say, Jesus, you use me. For years, coming up in a pastor's home, daddy would have some of the best preachers, I guess, that one could ever hear. Some of them were never popular, never famous, but men that were anointed by God I only God knows how many times that I heard one of those preachers that made the statement hide me behind the cross and for a kid coming up in the church all I could think about was that preacher running around behind the cross you know and, and hiding right behind the cross and then it started really sinking in 
These preachers were getting up there saying, I don't want them to see me. I want them to see Jesus. My motivation is not for men to see me. My motivation is for men to see Jesus in me. Hide me. Hide me in the cross. Hide me in the Savior. Hide me in that Redeemer. I want to be everything that God wants me to be. And I don't know why today that even earlier, I just felt like that God just put this into my spirit to, to go back and tell you tonight, none of us are too old. God's not finished with you. God's not finished with any of us. You may say, Brother Spallin, I've run my race. I've done what I can. No, if you were finished, then God would have already taken you. But you're not finished. You are here with a cause. Answer that cause. Run to the place where that, where that you need to be in God tonight. Let God use you. Let God, let God motivate you again. All right? Some of us have just lost our zeal. Some of us need God to fill the old steam engine back up again. Some of us just need to put a few more logs on the fire because the water's in there. We just got to get a bullet again. Amen. Now, preacher, you really went back in the days. You went to steam engines. I'm telling you, God wants to use us. God wants to use you. You want to be used of God tonight? I want you to step out from where you're at. I want you to find your place to pray. I want you to say, God, help me to understand my cause like Christ understood his cause. He knew the reason why he was here. Help me to know the reason why I'm here. Will you join me in prayer tonight? Come on, join me in prayer tonight. Let's get around these altars. God, help me. Help me. I want to be hid in the cross. I want to be used of God. Jesus, use me. Jesus, use me, I pray. Use me, Lord. I know, Lord, that there is a work that I must do. God, help me, Lord, to be motivated in you to do it.
want Jesus to use you. I want to be used of it. I really do more and more and more. And I really hope that's your prayer. It's a sincere prayer, Lord. I want to be used of you. Praise God. Please be praying this next week. We have so many things that's going on with our Christmas play practices. And tomorrow night, you're not alone in the fellowship hall. And just pray for our Wednesday night services. And God will just touch us. And I want to encourage you to be back out with us Wednesday evening. It's a time of refueling, refilling. Let's come on out and let's worship God together. We have ordered some t-shirts and there were some extra. And I don't know anything about the sizes, but I know that there were some pretty colors with some of them. If you'll get with Sister Leah, she can fill you in on them. Uh, so if you're interested in any of those, uh, get with her. That's the best thing. I've had people ask me about them. I said, look, that's her. She's the one that's been dealing with them. She can tell you the price on them. And if I start telling you something, she may be giving me one of those looks like, no, that's not the price. So she knows what it is. Will you stand with us tonight? Looking at the verse that's in the bulletin, Mary said unto the angel, how shall this thing be? So you're wondering, how is it? How is these things going to be in my life? When you trust God, God makes a way where there seems to be no way. He's the way maker, isn't he? Hallelujah. That's what I love about God. He is the way maker. Father, I ask you tonight to go with your people. Bless them. God, bless them in truth. Bless them in integrity. Help them, God, to be children of God. To keep the laws. To abide in your word. God, that they may reap the benefits of being in your word. I just ask you, God, to let us live a life of righteousness and holiness that is pleasing unto you. God, that we'll have the peace of God that passes all understanding. The joy of the Lord will bubble up and down the avenues of our soul. God, that it will be you to speak into us, speak through us, and God, that you will speak over us tonight. Put a hedge about us. God, that the devil cannot... He cannot penetrate. God, you put those walls up around us. Let the angels of the Lord encamp around about your people. And Father, we'll praise you. We will bless you. In the holy name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Shake hands with one another. And God